Hi, everybody, and welcome to the second in our four-part webinar series designed to help clubs upskill and support them going forward in the BI Club Mark. And um, for any of you who don't know what the Club Mark is, it is a program designed by us, the BI Development Officers, to help ensure clubs are following best practice and are sustainable. You can find out more about the Club Mark by going to the BI website and clicking on the Club Mark section along the banner, or you can email me at pcar at basketballireland.e. That's pcar at basketballireland.e. So just some of the rules for today. So if you can stay on mute um, for the, the entirety of the presentation. If you have any questions at the or during the presentation, you can type them into the chat box and I'll ask them directly to Niall at the end. If you, at the end of the presentation you want to ask a question directly yourself, you can just use the reactions button to put up a little hand or a little emoji like you see on my screen here. And I'll ask you to unmute yourself and then you can ask the question. Um, so that's just the rules for today. Um, so now our presenter today is Niall Berry, who is the Regional Development Officer for Basketball Ireland and Limerick Institute of Technology. Niall looks after developing competitive and participation basketball in LIT, as well as developing club basketball in the Midwest. He has a bachelor's degree in sports coaching and performance and a master's degree in applied sports psychology. He coaches at national level and international level here in Ireland. He's also coached in America as the program director for Hoops Life Basketball Academy in Florida and athletic director in a summer camp in Pennsylvania. So he'll be talking about creating a player pathway within your club. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Niall. Thanks, Paul. I'll just share this presentation. So I suppose to start with this is um, from a, a Basketball Ireland perspective, this is one of the first tasks that, that I took on um, with the development officers uh, when, I, when I joined Basketball Ireland. And it was a great thing to start with, I suppose, to sit down and have a conversation about how we as, as a development officer staff can um, assist clubs in, in creating a player pathway that would, I suppose, create a curriculum that would guide players through learning the game of basketball over, over time in long-term athlete development mode, rather than just, I suppose, going year to year, learning new skills, different skills, and, and I suppose not having any continuity behind how we do things. So, so what we did here is we put together what we call the player pathway, guiding clubs in athlete development, and it's, it's a, a document and a system by which clubs can sit down and just develop their own um, player pathway so that they, as, a, as an organization or as, as a club, can, can have the best long-term athlete development structure in place possible. Um, so this happened to me last time again now, and it's, I skipped, there we go. All right, so firstly, introducing the, uh, the pathway document. So this is the document, and you'll find this document in the gold uh, club mark, so the level three of the club mark under the gold section on the website. Um, and basically what the document is, it's, it's five sections that take you through, I suppose, creating your own pathway for your club. Um, that keeps happening. It's, so the first section here is, the, is just the introduction to introduction pathway to Basketball Ireland's player pathway, and I'll talk you through it in a second. Second section over on the right is the tactical development. Third section will be the shooting section. Um, I can, do you see that, Paul? That keeps stopping on me. Oh, sorry. Uh, the next section then is the tactical development. And then the final section here is the suggested player pathway and a blank template to assist clubs in, I suppose, making their own player pathway. Um, so the player pathway uh, document section. It's the first section, the introduction to the Irish basketball player pathway. So the first thing I need to highlight is that on all of these pathways, the, there is chronological age on the left-hand side. So you can map uh, the growth of your athlete from six years of age through their teenage years up to 40 plus. Um, I'm delete this. The first section of this is the club pathway. So this breaks down how young players move through a club pathway. So when they enter into academies at eight, nine, and 10 years of age, and then move into under 12s and under 14 teams, move into under 16, under 18 teams. So they, they play regional competitions, local league competitions, and they have an opportunity to qualify for national competitions through that. Uh, then they move into their under 18s, 20s, and seniors and start to get a little bit more competitive. They can enter into the National Cup and they can enter um, into the National League at under 20 and senior. And then they obviously have the Masters tournaments at 40 plus. So it's fairly comprehensive. Anybody who wants to play basketball in this country can 
there's, there's always basketball for somebody. The next section is the school's pathway. So it starts at primary school and it shows you third class through sixth class. And it, after you get through third class and sixth class, you move into first and second year basketball, where again, you play regional competition. And if you're successful in regional competition, you move into all Ireland competition uh, in first and second year. Cadets are under 16, seniors under 19. Uh, you can enter into the National Cup, but you also play regional competition. So you have two chances to move forward in all Ireland in all Ireland playoffs. And once you graduate from school, secondary school, you move into collegiate basketball. Collegiate basketball is any age, but if you're if you're enrolled in a full-time education, you can play collegiate basketball either as a fresher or as a, or as a varsity player, uh, men's and women's. I suppose the last section then is the international pathway. So kids that I suppose coaches or or athletes that feel that they're of, of the standard can enter into the under 14 and 15 regional academies you know, and try out to be selected for an academy that will inevitably lead them into under 16 European championships or under 18 European championships. There's a development squad at under 17 for kids that have not made the under 18 team and just graduated from 16s, that they get an extra year's development to try and make that under 18 squad. And then they have men's and women's squads at senior level and under 20 level. And then obviously the, the senior or the, the master's competition is, is 40 plus. So uh, there's basketball path. That pathway just breaks down for any kid or any club. Um, what, their, what their career in basketball looks like if they stay, if they stay over time, you know, if they, if they engage fully for their career. Second section of the document has the tactical breakdown. So the tactical breakdown is broken down into six components, um, really five, because um, shooting is a standalone component. But the first five are ball handling, um, passing, rebounding, boxing out, individual defense, and then offensive footwork as a guard or a post. And this section of the document has, um, I suppose, videos that would give you an introduction to how to coach each of those skills. Um, some of them are long, some of them are, are long videos that are bought by the WABC, and others are smart, short um, tutorial videos and such videos like our at home skills development series that uh, Basketball Ireland has just launched recently over the, the first lockdown. So, you know, it gives, gives everybody a starting point to understanding the technical components of the game of basketball and also gives you videos of how to start the process of coaching those technical components um, for each of your coaches. The next component is the shooting uh, document. And I've broken down the shooting document, uh, well, we as a development staff have broken it down into three sections. The first section would be the form shooting, so balance, eye, elbow, follow through, one or two videos in there to how to teach form shooting. The second section is the shooting series. So, you know, different shooting, shooting in rhythm, coming off screens, catch and shoot, dribble pull-ups, you know, different ways to shoot the ball in, in game-like motions. So it's not just static form shooting, it's, it's building up a shooting repertoire. And then the final section of the shooting series is the layup series. So different types of layups, getting into reverse layups, uh, two for the floaters, regular layups, um, step through spin moves. And there's videos here to show you how to start the process of coaching um, that as well. The technical or the tactical components, uh, there's, it's, it's a little bit more comprehensive. So there's 10, um, well, it's, there's 10 overall components of it. And those components are 2v2 and 3v3 offense, 2v2 and 3v3 defense. There's an offense against a the zone. There's offense against a man. There's help defense, there's zone defense. There's transition offense and defense. There's team pressing and press, press breakers end of game management, and then there's out of bounds plays. And each one of those sections also has videos. So it really is a comprehensive look of how to start coaching your teams as a young coach, but also how we as older coaches can help mentor young coaches and, and then make sure that we're, we're helping people, assisting people with, with developing their coaching ability and, and, and how to coach. And then the last section of the document has, the, has both the suggested player pathway by the development officers and a blank template, uh, that blank template is designed so that clubs can fill out their own player pathway. Uh, the reason we give a suggested player pathway is because we want to uh, facilitate clubs looking at it and getting an understanding of what it looks like. Um, but at the end of the day, each club is going to specifically design their own template. Um, and that's the next section of this presentation is going to take you through that. So this is the suggested player pathway. And I just take you through this so you have a fair idea of, of what we, we as a development staff would suggest maybe kids learning at certain age groups. Again, it's going to be different club to club, but it gives you a basis to start. Again, chronological order of age is on the left-hand side. Uh, the shooting development section is the first section in the document. 
the technical development is the middle section of the document, and then the tactical development is the right-hand section of the document. Um, if you look at it from year to year, so at under eights, it, it looks pretty comprehensive. It's a comprehensive year for kids if you teach them specific things at each age group. So if we look at, you know, we move into 10 years of age, if you give them one or two things each year, and what you start to have is you start to have pretty full years because kids are learning shooting, technical, and tactical development stuff but they're learning it over time so that they're not just learning all these, th these things at once that we're taking time to teach these kids um, the game of basketball uh, in a way that they can internalize it and actually get familiar with it. And I suppose I wouldn't say master, but definitely have a very solid fundamental over time. And by the time they get to 18, 20 years of age, they've learned all of the skills and techniques and tactical components of the game of basketball. Now we can start really using the, the knowledge and, the, and our developed players to affect change on, on outcomes and performance and, and trying to really go after being successful on a national level or even international level because we have robust, well-developed athletes. You know, and and I, I, I said, from my perspective, it's each year is a pretty comprehensive year if you look at it from year to year. And a lot of the time we as coaches, and I, I definitely have done it in the past myself as a coach, I've tried to teach kids all of these things in this document in a year or two years. And I haven't really thought about it over a long term and, and what these kids, what's best for these kids in a learning capacity. So basically, this is the blank template. And I'm going to just suppose go through how we as a, a staff would sit down and, and put this together. So if we take that first section, we take that shooting section and we just take the, um, the first part of it and we say fundamentals. What do we want our kids to learn at eight, nine years of age or seven and eight years of age? So we say we want them to perfect elbow and follow through. That's, that's a good year. If they can spend eight months of the year that, that we had coaching for basketball, learning how to get their elbow under the ball and, and shoot the ball and follow through. It's a very good start to a young shooter's abilities. Now, maybe under 10 years of age, we, we sit down as a staff and we talk about, let's get them their balance right at under 10s and make sure they're focused on their targets. And now by the time they get to 10 years of age, they've spent two or three years for really learning how to shoot the ball, but not kind of overwhelmed with remembering four or five, six, seven different things that they're they're working on one or two things that can really make and enhance their shooting ability. Um, maybe we talk as a coaching staff and we sit down and we say, look, we want them to learn their layups in their, at, at 12 years of age. Maybe you say you want them to learn their, their layups at 10 years of age or 14. It's club specific. It doesn't have to be a certain way. Um, but it's, it's, this is designed so you can put whatever works for your club in there. Maybe you sit down at, at 14 and say, look, we want our 14-year-olds to learn how to shoot coming off screens. We want our 14-year-olds to learn how to shoot off the dribble, um, how to use a flare screen to get open, how to uh, dribble pull-ups or you know catch the ball in rhythm, shoot. Maybe that's a, a huge component of 14 years of age. But now, as you can see there, from seven to 14 years of age, you have kids training for, for five, six, seven years, and they've learned stuff over time. They haven't just tried to learn all this together at the same time. So it gives them, a, it gives them ability to comprehend it and really understand it. And they get to 16 years of age, and we get into superset drilling. Basically, what superset drilling is, is doing all of these now that the kids understand these on a deeper level, doing all these in our training sessions. You know, so maybe starting with layups and then starting with shots coming off screens, maybe having a 15 minute drill where you're doing form built into layups, built into rhythm shooting. And now you're 15 minutes done with all of those. But kids understand it completely and they know what they're doing. You know, and you continue that throughout their development, you know, throughout their, their now that they've, they're seasoned shooters. Now you're, you're starting to progress and then it becomes coach specific from that point on. The next section you sit down maybe is with the technical uh, pathway and, and you sit down as a coaching staff and you discuss what do we want our kids to learn at eight, nine years of age. And so at eight years of age, maybe we just introduce them to all their skills. Maybe we say at 10 years of age, we want them to really work on the ball handling and their offensive footwork, you know, so they're able to protect the ball with their bodies. Maybe they get into 12 years of age and they work on their passing and their defense. Right? Maybe as a club, you flip those and you ask, you say you want them to learn their passing and their defense at 10s and ball handling and offensive footwork at 12, you know, it, it based on basically is whatever way works for your club. 14 years of age, now that they're very fundamentally solid in passing and defense and ball handling and footwork, maybe we start to teach them how to get, get a body on their player and get their rebounds. So they're, they're putting in some really good work defensively. Now we teach them how to protect the boards and, and only allow teams to get one shot. Now, and once they get to 16 years of age, now they've learned some, all of the key technical components of the game of basketball. Now, again, we're ready to start superset drilling. So maybe we're starting to do zigzag dribble and defense. So we're doing defense and dribbling at the same time. You know, maybe we're doing some footwork drills that incorporate passing and moving. So we're, we're doing footwork and passing at the same time and rebounding at the same time. 
you know, and now these kids are ready to comprehend doing things in bulk at the same time because they understand the individual components. And then you sit down maybe with your club and you talk about the tactical components. And, and this is the difficult one. Every club will teach tactics differently. They'll, every club will value tactics differently. Not differently. So maybe, it, maybe we teach them nothing at eight years of age and at, at 10 years of age, we're teaching them offensive movement against a man. Maybe we're teaching them like five outs, four outs, just pass and move, pass and move, pass and move, getting these kids to move after they pass the ball. You know, maybe we get to 12 years of age and we're teaching them transition offense and defense or health defense. You know, maybe we flip those. It's, I'm saying maybe a lot here because it really is subjective to your club. And, and this, this document is designed to help you develop your club and to, to assist your coaches in long-term player development. You know, it's, there's, no, there's no reason for me to tell you what we should be learning here. Um, maybe you get 14 years of age, your 2v2, 3v3 offense and defense. Now, now all of a sudden these kids are, are pretty good with the ball or good at passing the ball or good at re, uh, handling the ball. Now we can teach them how to, how to use screens to affect, you know, um, how we can pass and screen away and, and what are the options of a pass and screen away. You know, maybe then we get to 16 and we teach them zone offense and defense. You know, they, they can comprehend zones better and they can use their man concepts to develop their zone defenses in the same vein and, and have a really tight knit uh, zone defense and, and how to play our offense against the zone. And then when they get to their 18 and 20, it gets more competitive. So maybe we add end of game management and pressing so that we can go in and try and win games at a very in, uh, uh, intense level. And again, superset coaching or coach specific tactical coaching comes in at the 18s to 20s <clears throat> where you're preparing to win at the highest level. But now you have a really robust athlete, that, a bunch of athletes where everybody can do all of the technical skills, fundamental shooting skills, and they can do all of the, and they understand the tactics of the game of basketball to be able to adapt to any kind of team they play against. So when you're finished, you'll, you'll come with a document basically like this. And the document basically is a breakdown of, of what you value as a club at each age group and what you really focus on teaching your kids at each age group. Um, I can't stress, and this is this next section of the presentation is, is about making the document your own. So, excuse me. If, the, if everybody's making these documents and they're all specific, make it, make it specific to your club. You know, so I, I've done a few of these with some clubs already, obviously, and they're moving through this process. And, and making this document your own <clears throat> is a great way to have coach buy-in and player buy-in and, and just make it so that your club is, um, is unified and it's moving forward on it. So at this point, you should have a, a completed docket. So at the end here, you can see that the, the player pathway is filled out. So if you filled out this document now, this is what it would look like. So to make it your own, there's just a few small steps. First one is delete the player, the suggested pathway. There's no need for it anymore. You've created one tailored to your club. So there's no need to, I suppose, our job as development officers is to assist in people understanding and building a, a suggested pathway. But once you've made your own, there's no need for our suggestions anymore. You have now identified your process and you can then adapt that accordingly as you go through it. Um, give every component a, a page. So I would say is like open up the page, open up the document, like make every, so I have ball handling as a page, shooting as a page, shooting off the dribble has, or shooting series as a page, you know, um, 2v2, 3v3 has a page, you know, playing against zone as a page. So what you're doing is you're adding space here to add your own videos, you know, so you can then go and maybe, I said, if you're working with the senior club, senior team in your club, go and video a practice and then break it down, you know, put it on YouTube, clip it. Make, make little 10, 15 seconds or maybe 30 second, one minute video clips of, of how to coach specific, thing, uh, sp specific components of your club. Um, you know, make videos, make longer videos, make tutorial videos for your coaches and put them in there of how to coach pick and roll offense, 2v2 offense or 3v3, you know, make it your own. Um, I would definitely do that so you can, you can make it a long-term kind of development document. Colors. You know, may put some colors in there, put some borders on there, make it your, the colors here. So just say this is the Boston Celtics document, which is what I've identified it for the, for the sake of this proposal or this presentation. You know, put colors on it, make it a green document because we're Celtics, put a, put, a, um, put a gold rim around us, you know, make it your own. Um, pictures and a cover page, as, as I see here over the left, I just inputted the Celtics logo and put Boston Celtics player development pathway. You know, put in your pages, go into your Facebook page, go into your, um, take photos of, of your athletes playing basketball <clears throat> and put them in, to put them into your document. You know, so you're highlighting that this is our document. This is how we do things. This is how we develop our athletes. And this is the product of it. You know, these are our kids and this is how they play. Um, you know, really take ownership of it and, and make it something that's, that's important for your club um, to, to get behind and to work together in athlete development. 
There's a few sections of the document I just want to talk about, just as people might be asking, what are those sections? Um, some people might know what those sections are. There are three specific sections. The stages of LTAD is one of them. Growth rate is another one. And training structure is the third one. So the first one, stages of LTAD. Uh, so Bally and Hamilton in 2004 identified the stages athletes go through when they're developing. And they've identified it from active start at a young age, fundamentals up through learning to train, training to train as their teenage years, training to compete in their later teenage years, <coughs> and then training to win is their, um, training to win is, is when they're fully developed athletes. And I suppose anyone that wants to look into that research can see what kind of, what the focus is at each age group. Now, like any research, it's there to be, I suppose, taken apart. And like anything, it's, it has good and bads to it. But for me, it, it starts a conversation amongst coaches about what kids should be learning and what age groups. And as long as we're having the conversations and we're adaptable, this kind of research is very, very, can be very successful in helping us identify how to train our athletes at age groups and maybe how to adapt things we're doing successfully or unsuccessfully. Um, so that was that's that's identified in the document through each of the age groups. So you can see um, you can you can have the conversation on that behalf. The growth rate. So the young at a young age, it's rapid growth towards st steady growth. Adolescent growth spurt is in their teenage years and de declining growth rate at their older ages. So Ford and then Lloyd and Oliver have all identified growth rate in their um, in their strength and condition research primarily. So it's but it's understanding growth rate. I think is very important for coaches in a club. You know, kids at a young age have a steady growth rate and they're very, you know, they're, they're in and they want to play and they're, they're very um, stable. But once kids get into their teenage years, which is probably the most access we have to them, they get very unstable, you know, and they, they go through growth spurts and they have a lot of um, hormonal balances and hormonal changes that we as coaches have to understand. We might have a kid that comes in really happy one day and comes in really sad and upset or really angry the next day and frustrated and and. You know, it's, it's not their fault. It's, it's, it's because they're going through a growth spurt and their body is changing. And we need to understand that as coaches. And we need to understand that when we coach these things in there, we have to be adaptable as coaches to, to suit our athletes, to help our athletes through those times. And then there's a decline in growth rate in their, in their older ages. So you have to understand that as the decline in, in growth rate comes, you, you know, you have to adapt and tailor your, your training appropriately and be intelligent about how you train your athletes in their, in their 20 plus years. And then the last piece of this that's, that's scientifically researched is the training structure. So the training structures was identified by Cody Baker and Abertini, Abernetti. Um, so their development model of sports participation is, um, is, is well documented. I suppose everybody, anybody in the research world would know a lot about it. And it's, it's just basically um, on the right hand side here, it, this is early specialization. This is when a kid gets, starts to specialize in sports at seven, eight, nine and 10 years of age. So the chronological order again is on the left. Um, and so this is just specifically deliberate practice. The kids are a um, are high amount of deliberate practice from a very young age. And, and it kind of, it leads to elite performance for some, but a, a very much a lot of drop off for others. Whereas if entry into sport is on, on the left-hand side of this graph, it is, um, it's more geared towards deliberate play at the young ages. You know, kids playing games, playing multiple sports, playing different games. And then as they start to get into their teenage years, they start to have a change in deliberate play towards deliberate practice and, and working on fundamental components of, of the sports. And then as they get into their 18, they get into their investment years, 18 plus, where they really start to, to take on the approach of becoming very successful as a basketball player or a sports person. And that's reflected in the, do in the document. So, I mean, at a young age, kids should have a low structure. So they should have a, a high amount of deliberate play everything in their games, everything they learn should be all game-based. It should always be for a game. Find a game that suits what you're trying to teach and then have the kids like enjoy that game rather than it being a structured breakdown training session. When they get into their mid-teens, there should be a moderate structure. So that's probably a 50-50 split, 50% play, 50% practice. You know, so you come in, you play a few games, then you start doing, okay, we need to work on our shooting now. We need to work on our layups. We need to work on our passing, our defense or whatever we need to work on for the next 15, 20 minutes. And then you bring it back to play and, and the kids then can become, you know, they're in that environment where it's, it's better for their development if they're in a 50-50 split in their teenage years. And then as they get more competitive and the training, compete, training to compete, training to win, excuse me, training to compete, training to win, it starts to get a higher structure. Um, there starts to be a higher structure and a very high structure when they're training to win because they need to be prepared for games. And, and that's when we start to get high, um, higher structure. So um, the final thoughts, and I've just one, two, or a couple of um, final thoughts here on this. And 
The first one is, is the importance of collaboration when you're making this document. So th there's two ways in which you can create this document. You can sit down as, I suppose, the organizers of a club and you can make your own, you can sit down by yourself or with one other person and you can, you can build your own tactic. And then you can go to the, maybe you have five coaches working in your club and you go to those five coaches and say, this is the pathway we've, divide, we've identified for our club. And we want you to, uh, this is what we want you to teach the kids at each of these age groups. Now, the, I mean, that's it's probably it's an easier way to do it. But the problem with that is, is that you're not going to have a lot of buy-in from your coaches. And when you don't have buy-in from your coaches, it's very rare you'll have buy-in from your players. And um, so I can't stress the, enough the importance of collaboration. You know, sit down with your coaches as a coaching staff. That's, that's why that picture is here. Sit down with everybody. You know, everybody's opinion matters. And sit down and discuss what we all feel is important to teach our kids at each age group. And when you do that, you know, even if people have difference of opinions, if you can discuss it and you can come to some kind of consensus, or at the very least, you can come to a, a I suppose, a, what's the word I'm looking for? Not a unanimous decision, but you know, most the majority decision, then what you will have is, is that people will buy in. They'll say, okay, all right, we talked about it. And the majority of us think that that elbow and follow through should be taught at under age at eight. I don't agree with it personally, but I'm happy to be part of the process. And, and I, you know what, I'll buy in because maybe I had a discussion in tactical and I said 2v2 and 3v3 needs to be brought in here at under 14s and someone disagreed with me, but the vast majority agreed with me. So we kind of went with that. So, you know, I'm willing to buy into our, our philosophy, even if it's not 100% my philosophy. This is how we develop our athletes. And I said, once you get into that situation, then your, your coaches will all look at the document as something that will, that they, that will assist them in athlete development. That, uh, and it will assist them to develop their, their players over time, regardless of who's coaching them, rather than just doing their own team. You know, it, it creates a collaboration, it creates a, a continuity amongst uh, coaches. And I think that's one of the most powerful things about this document. Um, let's go again. The second thing, and I spoke about this already, but I can't stress it enough as well, is, is tailor it. Tailor your document to your club. That's another thing that's going to get your, your club buying in, your players buying in. Um, and then the final thing here, and I think I'm just about up on time, but the final thing is uh, this, is, this document is designed by the development officers to guide clubs in athlete development. You know, what our job, what we're, what we're trying to do here is, is to, to give players or give clubs a, an idea of, of how to create a template, how to create a pathway, and then assist them where necessary to, to create their own document. Um, this is not in any way our, our design to tell people how to coach their players or how to do their do their job, it's, that's not our role. Our role is to try and assist in any way possible. So if you have any questions, if there's any questions at this point that I can answer and try to help move in that direction, I'd be very happy to take them. Thank you very much for that, Niall. Um, so if you just want to share your screen. So we have um, a couple of questions here and I will start reading them out. If anyone else wants to ask a question, please feel free to put them into the chat box or if you want to ask the question directly, use the reactions button to put up a little symbol on your screen like I'm doing here now. I'll ask you to unmute yourself and then you can ask the question directly. Um, so the first question we have in here, Niall, is should clubs have the same pathway for boys and girls? I sometimes find um, girls have better fundamentals at a younger age group. Would you have the exact same pathway document for both boys and girls? Um, I suppose two ways, there's two parts to that answer for me. The first one is, is that it is club specific. Some clubs don't have boys and girls. They only have boys or they only have girls. Um, some clubs are, have both. And, and I know an awful lot of the time clubs with both boys and girls have different coaching staffs for their boys and for their girls. So if you have different coaching staffs for your boys and for your girls, it may be no harm to have two pathways one male, one female, or if you want to collaborate and work together and you create one, it, there, there will be adaptation. So for me, I suppose the second part is, is the, when you create this, this pathway, very often at the end of the year or, or in two years from now, you look at it and kind of, you know what, we're teaching this at this age group and I think we need to teach this earlier or we need to teach this later and you will adapt it. And if you make the first, if you make the same pathway straight off the bat first day, then you may adapt at the end of the year and say, you know what, our girls need to learn this at this age and our boys need to learn this at this age and it may become separated. So I suppose there's no clear answer, but I would, I me mean, personally, I would start with the same one for everybody and then adapt where necessary rather than to begin with, but that's my personal preference. 
Okay, perfect. And um, the next question in we have is: Can you combine the club and school pathways? How can clubs get buy-in from schools and vice versa? Um, I, I suppose if there's a man in Portlaoise, Pat Critchley. Everybody knows him. Um, Pat, Pat actually works in Portlaoise College, and he says that the best thing that they do up there is, is they collaborate. Even they collaborate not only from club and, and school point of view, but they collaborate across from all their sports too. So as a coaching staff, they always work together. And I think that that has been very successful in the girls basketball side of things, where Pat's working very much in the last number of years. So I think the only way to move forward is collaboration. I think everybody should be working together. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the way the climate that we have, people are, are want to be successful so much that they're unwilling to collaborate at times because they feel like that they don't get the fair end of the stick in a collaboration. So it's a difficult one. I do believe there should be collaboration between schools and clubs. I think if a kid is playing under 14 in school and they're playing in a club under 14, and the, 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 there should be a collaboration there to, to assist each other with moving forward in long-term athlete development. Okay, thanks. I think, um, is it Owen? Would you like to ask a question? I see you're unmuted there. Uh, Owen's iPhone. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, so I suppose one of the next questions we have is uh, how does this work in terms of, of a coaching or uh, developing your coaches as well um, in terms of um, sorry let me just get this so in terms of putting the right coaches in the right places for the, the long term athlete development that's a, that's a great question and we actually spoke about that yesterday Paul and we like when we when we discussed this I think once you develop your player pathway, I think you will automatically look at coaches and go, they're great at that skill. So I would definitely think that there are specific coaches that are suited to specific skills and coaching specific skills. However, there's two different types of coaches. Like there's some coaches that want to push themselves beyond their boundaries and they want to learn new things and they want to try new things. So making sure that we're not restrictive of our coaches is a big deal. It's like don't put them at an age group uh, and then say you're the, you, that's you're great at that, so that's what you do. And then two or three years later, they have no challenge, and they're not they're not really enjoying coaching because they've been doing the same thing for two or three years. And now all of a sudden, they don't have that motivation to coach. Now you lose a coach. Um, but there's other coaches that love, like I know plenty of coaches that love working in academies, and they just want to work with the under tens, twelves, and they'll stay there for the rest of their life if they can, and that's their motivation. So. I think you need to understand the coach's motivation. There's some coaches that want to progress and want to try different age groups and trying to find a way to facilitate that is absolutely key. Um, I do believe that the certification process in Basketball Ireland might fit in well into this and, and certifying your coaches at specific ages to coach specific ages. Um, you know, that would be a great deal. That would be a great thing for your coaches now then to say, all right, I'm going to get certified so I can work on these skills with these kids. That, that definitely creates a continuity there too, you know? Yeah, and it's something we talked about as well in terms of um, having sort of like coach education nights within the club in terms of if you have a coach who maybe might be great at teaching something that's at under 14, but wants to coach at under 18, he can do a night where he, he teaches the under 14 coaches how to teach that specific skill and, and things like that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the next question we had is, does the pathway require the coaches to be available to coach for a few years? Uh, in a row to ensure buy-in as coaches seem to be different each year, mostly parents helping out at the moment. Yeah, um, I think parents would be very happy to get the assistance. Personally, I think I think if you give them a pathway and said, look, this, this is what we teach at these age group, they would be happy to it. I think for me, if you have a coaching staff there right now and you go to build a pathway and you build it while if the coach has been in the in the club for a year or two, and then you come in and you kind of change the script you know like changing the goalposts mid game is not fair changing the goalposts before the game okay well we just that's the way that's where the goalposts are so i think if you i think building the pathway is important to sit down and collaborate with whoever's working in your club right now but people that come into your club next year or the year after would be very happy to be like from day one to say look this is what we coach our kids at these age groups like they're they're coming into that pre pre-identified idea that okay so if i come in i'm going to be coaching the kids a b and c yeah exactly Exactly. And then, you know, you, you get them to buy in from day one too, you know, so they don't have to have the same collaboration. Brilliant. Um, next question is, can different sports collab collaborate in developing players? It seems that competition is the norm, especially by GAA and soccer. 
Yeah, I think I think there's definitely room for GA, and I think it's, it's happening across the country right now where GA does partner with basketball. You know, and I think soccer could collaborate and partner with basketball too. And and there's, I suppose, if you're a coach that's coaching your lo- your kid at a local soccer club and you're coaching your kid at a local basketball club, and you have a way to facilitate their development through making an all year round pathway that includes basketball and soccer, then all, by all means go ahead. Um, I do believe collaboration is important, and I think I, I'm a big advocate for it. I think that's uh, that's how we all move forward. So I would say that if you have if you have coaches willing to collaborate across sports you're going to have the most robust um, conditioned and developed athletes probably in the country. Yeah. And I think one of the big things with, with that as well is player burnout. And I think that's a great way of where you should link with other clubs in terms of if you can see um, you have a group of players who play basketball and play GA and play soccer and play numerous things, it's talking to the other coaches and having a good relationship that if they're training three sports in the one week, okay, well, you're in your conditioning stage in GA, so I'm not going to run my players. I'm going to work more on skills and tactics and things like that, just so you don't have a child doing sprints and everything three times a week. So I think that's definitely an important thing in collaboration with other clubs. Um, one of the questions we have in here is, do, does the area boards have an obligation to ensure this is implemented, or is it, in to, is it up to clubs individually? Uh, no, the, the area boards don't have an obligation to, to ensure this is this is um, implemented. I think it's it's up to each specific club on whether they feel like this is a massive benefit to them or not to start straight away. If you go for the gold club mark, you it'll be it's part of the process. So you'll need to to um, complete this as part of that process for your club. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the area boards are there to facilitate in leagues rather than um, player development. They facilitate facilitate league development facilitate club development and player development is a part of that but really the onus is on club members and club people to 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 facilitate to, to take the take the reins of developing their athletes and um, the, the area boards will help as much as they can but um this is going to be specifically for each club specifically tailored to each club and they, they you know they can't take on that that responsibility yeah and ju- just to let you know as well that um us as development officers although we we are pushing the club mark and we want people to engage in the club mark we think this is this is something above the club mark and something that is very important for you to engage with. So if it is something that you're interested in, but you're not at the point where you want to go for the club mark, we're we're more than happy. And I know Niall, you've done it with a, a numerous clubs already and sat down and and uh, worked with them on designing their player pathways. And, and we're happy to do that. We we want to help clubs as much as possible through the process. And um, so the next question we have in is. What do you suggest if an existing coach is not willing to buy into part of the player pathway, even if they were part of the collaboration? Tough one. Very tough one. Um, I, I'm a big, big believer in, is, is, I suppose, in the organization we're in, it's, it's a volunteer organization. Anybody who's willing to get involved and help a kid to be a better version of themselves is an asset, regardless of whether they buy in fully or not. Uh, I think, I think we, uh, I suppose anybody as an organizational leader or a club leader has to understand that your value is in your volunteers as such. Um, so it, it's a very difficult one. If, if people don't buy into certain concepts, I, I never tell anyone how they should or shouldn't coach. I would say, well, if you don't buy into that concept, you, you don't need to buy into it, but then we, we need to figure out a counter strategy of how that those kids get developed in those areas um, if they're not getting developed in those areas. But at the end of the day, I think, I suppose if you, for me, if we sit down and we do this process, I think I think any coach would buy it, would say, you know what, I'm I'm willing to to do what it takes to help make sure these kids are well rounded. Um, but again, it, it said there's a massive value in a volunteer coach in your club. So at, at the end of the day, we need to cater to our coaches too. As I said, if I was if I was running a club, my job is to to help the coaches be better and to grow rather than force them into development. If that makes sense, and that's. Suppose I danced around that answer a bit, but there's no really, there's no real clear answer on that, you know. Yeah, but I suppose something you said earlier in terms of, um, you know, as you get new coaches through through the the club, it might be a thing of going, or even existing coaches who maybe weren't entirely happy with the uh, the program when it was designed. It might be a thing two or three years later to go back to the drawing board and and see where you can improve and get get their get their opinions to, um, if 
you know, um, as you said earlier. Um, the next question we have is, how do you cater for new players who join at, example, age 15, but have little basketball skills and technique? How would you best integrate them when training might be focused on other areas? That is, that, that's the difficulty in having a pathway where they start so young. I think if you, I said, if you have done ball handling at 10 and a kid comes in at 12, or, or 14 and now all of a sudden you're not spending the same amount of time on ball handling in your session as you would have at 12. Now the other side of that coin is I think as a coach in this country when I started coaching in this country and, and I think a lot of coaches would agree with this right now with the way we coaches we try to do all of the skills with the kids at the same time and we still we still have a massive development in those kids you know, we may not have a year where they're specifically focusing on developing this skill to the maximum potential um, and working at the other skills too. Um, but at the same time, they are getting better and they are developing. So I don't see a kid coming in at 14 as they're going to, I suppose, they're not going to have that initial education of a skill, so they're not going to be able to do it. They'll still be able to do it. They just may not have the full understanding of it that the other kids would have got at a younger age. Um, I would probably maybe do makeup sessions. I would probably maybe do some extra sessions in, in that, like if extra sessions within my group to make sure that we're all get kind of moving forward in certain areas. Um, but they're not going, like if you miss a year where they do ball handling for 12 months and they're, they're or eight months and they're doing ball handling every session for 15, 20, 30 minutes, you're not going to get that back you, um, unless you do individualized training. Okay, brilliant. Um, so at this point, I know there might be a couple of other questions that one of might come in, or you might want to ask questions directly, but um, I know some people aren't comfortable doing it with the recording on, so I'm going to end the recording now in a second. Um, just to let you uh, know when the people watching this, um, if anyone needs any help applying with the club mark or designing any of these plans, you can uh, go to the Basketball Ireland website. Across the banner, you will see the club mark section. This document is in a uh, club mark level three which is the uh, gold club mark so you'll be able to find that document there and um, if you want to reach out to any development officers about applying for the club mark or designing this uh, program or even any of the other documents that you want to put in please do so and you can contact me at, at, at pcar at basketballireland.ie um, and I can put you in touch with Niall or any of the other development officers. Um, also, we did have a, another web webinar last uh, on Monday, which was the use of social media for clubs. That's on the club mark section now on the Basketball Learning website. We also have another one this uh, Monday coming at eight o'clock as well. That's going to be on coach licensing and Garda vetting. And then one on the following Thursday, which is securing sponsorship and applying for grants. And um, so there'll be stuff on the social media about that.